My goal is to not look up at the screen. The screen is up there. And I find myself looking at the screen so then it looks like I'm not looking at the camera. And I'm already at a detriment because I have this wonky eye. So naturally, I'm going to not look at what I'm looking at. Dudes, what's up? Today, I'm going to do a video going over how I do drums in my songs and in my videos. Primarily my songs, and the videos are just of my songs. Um, this is what happens when I don't script my videos. I ramble. Anyway, let's jump into Studio One, and I will show you what I'm doing with the drums. So, let's start this song. All right, so it may or may not seem like I have a lot going on, but first and foremost, I start with Superior Drummer. Get out of here. Superior Drummer 3. And I have curated a kit over many, many hours and days of pining through different samples of kick and tom and snare and presets and EQ moves. So a lot of people, and I used to do this too, and I still occasionally do this, will uh, use something like this, Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, Slate Drums, uh, you name it. There's there's a few others. And they will um, have their drums programmed and then output two separate tracks. And I, like I said, I used to do that, but I don't entirely do that anymore uh, because Superior Drummer, A, sounds so good out of the box i do use the mixer within superior drummer so uh based on uh, like some presets and then i tweak basically i i try to find a preset that's close and then i just tweak to taste and it essentially is nothing like the preset i started with so this is a preset i'm gonna make this available i'm surprised that i have it on this one anyway this is the preset, my preset. I have a few different ones. And um, so so basically, I am just using the mixer within. I think I said that. Um, and let's just hear how that sounds. Sounds pretty good. Sounds awesome. It's amazing that you can have drums that sound this good for a few hundred dollars. Um, now I have that bust into a, um, a channel with some parallel compression. Now, many of you will probably have heard of parallel compression. That's a technique used by... Um, professional producers and studio producers alike. So basically what I have is I have that mix going into this channel right here. And it basically sounds like garbage, but what it's doing is it's it slams. It's slamming that snare. It's slamming everything together. It's compressing it. It's making it one big block of a waveform. So I tuck that in underneath my superior drummer. So let's listen to it again. I'm using uh, the GGD Smash and Grab. Uh, typically, I used to use the, um, the Slate Digital FG, FG Stress, and I still occasionally use that. Um, it just depends how I'm feeling that day, what sounds right. I bounce back and forth. On this one, I'm using GGD. And then I have an EQ basically cutting off the high end, all the cymbal wash, and uh, a lot of that overly compressed low end. There's more sophisticated ways of doing this. This is like a, a nitty-gritty, down-and-dirty, quick-and-easy way 
to get my parallel compression for my drums. So I'll turn off that EQ and you, you'll see why I put it. So you can hear that's smashing it. Um, and I cut off all that wash and I just want that snare to crack and I want the toms to crack and a little bit of the room to be compressed as well. And like I said, that's basically like a cheater's way of doing it. So let, we'll listen to those together. So those two together uh, just sound massive. Um, for this track and a lot of my a lot of my tracks, what I've been doing recently is I've been supplementing with Get Good Drums. Um, I love Get Good Drums. I'm just so used to the MIDI programming within Superior Drummer that I can't jump fully over to it. So I will set Get Good Drums up within Contact and use the room, a room mic for a snare, and I'll use the kick to supplement my kick. So what the hell am I talking about? Let's listen. So I have, like I said, get good drums, loaded up in Superior, did some tweaking with that behind the scenes so that I have my kick and my snare coming out separate tracks. So here's the kick. And then I have the snare, but it's just the room mic, the far room mic. If we mix all that together, this is without the get good drums. It just adds some more beef to that kick. Um, and I like the sound of that room from the snare. Now, it's a little too much room hearing it on its own, but in the context of a mix, and like I said with my bass video, how important bass is to metal guitars, you got to think about the context of the mix. I'm not just, you know, bouncing drum tracks and listening to them on their own for my audible pleasure. If I were, I don't think I would want this much room on my snare. But in the context of the mix, it sounds good. Now, another key thing that I have going on this track that's a little bit unique, I don't do it all the time. Now I have Superior Drummer. I have my Parallel Compression track. I have my Get Good Drums Kick and I have my Get Good Drum Snare all bust to a drum bus right here. And on that drum bus, I have some compression happening. Now let's see how much we have going on. I don't remember. I have about two, three dB of compression happening and, and it's pretty much just hitting when the snare hits. So it's kind of chopping the top off the snare and just making it huge. <sighs> it's basically gluing that entire kit together, both Superior Drummer, and the Get Good samples I have supplementing it. It's gluing it all together. And then I have some tape saturation.
I just like the way this tape plugin sounds on most things. It seems to warm stuff up. It seems to to kind of roll off some of the real harsh high end stuff. So that's what I have going on. And then I have that drum bus going to my master bus. Now, it is a good idea to mention what's happening on my stereo bus. So without getting too far into the weeds, I send all of my tracks to a stereo bus before I send it to my main out. There's a lot to explain behind that for some of the new people, but basically I have a master stereo fader that I call stereo bus. And I, I, I top down mix. Now, some of you may have heard this concept bounced around quite a bit over the last year or so. Um, it's not a new concept. Producers have been using it for quite a long time, but what I do is after I'm done tracking, I throw on my stereo bus processing at the beginning before I add EQ to guitars, before I process my drums, before I process my bass, I have my stereo bus processing happening. Um, and I'm not going to go into the settings right now because that'll be a whole long... <laughs> That'll make this video longer than it probably already is. But I have a virtual mix rack. Basically, I'm making some, some EQ moves to bump the low end and bump the high end um, to make it sound a little more, uh, you know, radio ready, if you will. Then I have my master bus compression and tape saturation on my master bus. And then that goes to the main out within my... DAW, and you can duplicate this in any DAW, have a limiter. Now, why did I show you my stereo bus? That's because it is coming into play when it comes to my drums, and I'll show you. Uh, you're going to watch this VU meter, and um, basically, you're going to watch it react to the snare hits, and again, it's bringing up everything else in the song and bringing the crack of the snare down and kind of melding it all together. Now I kind of set it up so that I'm cutting off 2 to 3 dB when that snare hits. Now if you add everything into the mix... So what I did is I muted the drums so you could see that it's only reacting about a dB or so with all the instrumentation. And then when I bring the drums back into the mix, um, it's, it's, going, it's reacting about 3 dB when that snare cracks. And that's what I do to basically glue everything together. Now, I did not come with, up with this on my own. I stole this from Nolly Get Good of Periphery. Um, I watched several of his mixing mastering courses on Creative Live and um, the Unstoppable Recording Machine. I basically stole his concepts or learned from him and applied them to my use case. So I did not come up with this on my own. I basically learned from somebody much better than me. And um, I think it's made my mixes sound pretty good. Uh, like I said, there are more sophisticated and detailed ways of mixing drums, and I have done that in the past. Um, it's something that I'm still interested in doing. This is just the way I've been doing it lately to sort of streamline the mixing. And because a uh, superior drummer, in my opinion, sounds really, really good with the built-in mixer. So I figure, you know, I already have all that processing going on having all those samples loaded within Superior, why not use the mixer within and just keep everything cleaner a little bit on my DAWs mixer. So that is what I do for drums. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I am going to make this available, my Superior Drummer preset available to those who have Superior Drummer and all the associated um, add-on packs I will try to make note of what those are because I don't remember as I'm sitting here 
doing this unscripted video. So that's it for today. Thanks so much, guys, for all the feedback and all the questions. Never know how to end these things. <sighs> Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in the next one.